You know what's crazier than the fact that there's a car seat headrest album in the thumbnail? It's the fact that I talk about two car seat headrest albums in this video. Full disclosure, I stole this video idea from a bucket of Jake, so go check out his video. It's a lot more artsy than this one. So I saw Jake's video and I thought, what albums would I consider to be albums that have changed my life? And so I did a lot of deep soul searching here because I obviously, I listen to a lot of music to the point where I would consider listening to music my second job. In order for an album to change my life, I think it has to have a substantial impact on no, not only like the way that I listen to music, but also just me as a person. And so we're gonna dive into those today, starting with the first album that I've ever listened to, American Idiot by Green Day. This was the very first album that I ever listened to. I remember very distinctly I was in like the first or second grade. I was in the back of my friend's car. They were like, mom, play American Idiot. I don't know. I was just kind of entranced, you know, I was kind of enthralled by the, the style of music because like before then I've only listened to things that my mom would play in the car, like, you know, like stuff like Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake. So yeah, American Idiot was the first time that I really dove into an album like from front to back. Was, I'm pretty sure it's the first album that I ever owned on like a CD. It was the first time that I really kind of dove into the music itself. It's the first album that I really connected to. And I don't think I'd be as into music as I am today if I didn't discover that album so early on in my life. And from there, I kind of just, just started listening to a bunch of Green Day. I mean, I would listen to like the Green Day radio on Pandora when I'd play Minecraft. So I'd listen to like a lot of like Offspring, Fall Out Boy, and Panic at the Disco. My Chemical Romance, all of this stuff, all that like pop punk stuff really defined my elementary school years. American Idiot will always hold a special place in my heart. It's honestly a fantastic album. I should go back and revisit it again at some point soon. So long story short, American Idiot I think changed my life because I would not be as into music today as I am if it wasn't for that album. And another album that is very, very similar in the terms of why it's, why it's on this list, Lonesome Crowded West by Modest Mouse. I discovered this album back in the eighth grade. This album really changed my perspective on music a lot because this was the first album that I listened to that really had a lot of emotion connected with the album and like the lyricism and stuff like that. It was like the first time that I really kind of listened to the album that, to an album that like you could really dive a bit deeper into the lyricism. I mean, not to say that like My Chemical Romance doesn't have deep lyrics. I never really like, dove into a lot of lyricism until The Lonesome Crowded West. It's also like a completely different style of music than what I was used to at the time because I was listening to a lot of pop punk and stuff like that. When I discovered Modest Mouse and specifically this album, it's uh, it's an album that you could really get a little bit deeper into like the, the construction of the songs in terms of the uh, musical writing and the lyrical writing. Lonesome Crowded West I'd say is an album that kind of changed my life because it changed, it even further developed my perspective on music of like, okay, it's not all just power chords. From there I discovered bands like Radiohead and Built a Spill and Car Seed Headrest, which happens to be the next band that we're going to talk about here, Teens of Denial by Car Seed Headrest. A little bit of backstory, I started playing the guitar after listening to Muse. I was like really into uh, Matthew Bellamy's guitar riffs. I was like, damn dude, I want to do that. I want to learn how to play that stuff. And so I learned how to play guitar and then I was just like playing other people's shit a lot and then like maybe sometimes noodling around with some other ideas and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, I'm going to get really good at playing like guitar and bass and drums and like eventually in a few years, maybe I'll make an album. And then I listened to Teens of Denial. Just Hearing Will Toledo's story of like making all these albums on his own, recording vocals in his car, and then eventually like building up this cult based, cult like following, and being able to release his music on Matador Records. Not only releasing his music on Matador Records, but his debut album with a record label is an album like Teens of Denial. That shit was inspiring as hell. So I said, fuck it. I don't need to wait a few years to make an album. I'm gonna make an album right now. And that's exactly what I did and it kind of sucked. I learned a lot and I kept making music throughout my entire life. I still make music today and I feel like I get better and better with every release, but that first release, man, that was, whew, that was rough. <laughs> I could talk about the, the actual sound of the album, how cool it is and stuff like that. And obviously, if you listen to any one of my songs, you can tell that Carsey Headrest has inspired and influenced my sound a lot. I don't need to get into all that. I just, the whole reason why I'm talking about this album in this video particularly is because it got me into making music. I would not have taken that next step into creating music had I not listened to Teens of Nile and heard Will Toledo's story. I, I actually owe a lot to Will Toledo in my life and you'll, uh, you'll see why with the second album, the second Carsey Headrest album I talk about in this video. Now we're gonna roll into the next album, 
And you guys are going to see it. You guys are going to start kind of seeing this pattern here where uh, my life revolves around music. So a lot of <laughs> a lot of these albums are on here because they've helped me develop my music taste even further. And Animal Collective Song Tongues is one of those albums. This album has developed me into the man I am today. This album is on this list because it was a, a kind of a gateway drug into more unconventional styles of music that I like to, you know, boost my ego by saying I listen to all these these bands that scare the hoes and shit like that. But that's also probably why I don't have a girlfriend right now. I remember the first time I experienced a song off of this album. It's a very vivid moment in my life. It was also a kind of a sad moment in my life because I was like really into smoking weed and I would do this thing where I'd like, I played the cross in my 11th grade of high school. I would like come home from a cross practice. It'd be like eight o'clock. I'd eat, do my homework. I'd say goodnight to my mom. And then I'd go in my room and I'd hit my weed pen and it'd be like midnight and I'd have to get up the next morning for school at 6 a.m. But I'd be like, fuck it, man. I just want to smoke weed and listen to music, man. And then eventually through doing that so many times, I eventually stumbled upon Sung Tongs. Winter's Love came on my, uh, my like Discover Weekly or something like that. And I was so into the sound of Winter's Love that I then went into the album on Spotify and played the next song on the album which is Kids on Holiday. Winter's Love was like my was like my okay this shit is kind of cool. Kids on Holiday was my oh man this is I can see this changing my personality. <laughs> I don't think the drugs had anything to do with it to be honest it's just kind of a funny story to <laughs> Animal Collective was my first experience into more experimental type styles of music, Sung Tongs specifically. And because I listened to Sung Tongs and I loved it so much, I then listened to other Animal Collective releases and realized that there's so much more out there to music than just, you know, guitar, bass, and drums. You can do a lot of really cool stuff and you don't have to follow the rules of music. I think that's something that this album specifically has taught me and the albums that I've discovered through discovering this album has taught me. I would not be listening to half the shit I listen to today had I not discovered Sung Tongs. My freshman year of college, we're gonna skip ahead to when I discovered Since I Left You by The Avalanches. Sampling. Pretty big significant change in my life, I would say. At least in terms of like how I view art. So first there was like Animal Collective, but I didn't really know what samples were when I was listening to Animal Collective. I was just kind of hearing these noises and I was like, what the, how the hell are they doing this? What is, what is going on? And then I discovered the books and the books played a pretty significant role in my life, especially going into college. But then the books kind of led me into the avalanches. I would say Since I Left You would be the most significant change in my life in terms of like thinking about art in a different way, using samples and stuff like that. This album, Since I Left You, was made entirely only with samples, meaning there's not a single like live recorded instrument in this album. It is all taken from other pieces of music and art forms. It was my first time experiencing a fully sound collaged album. It's not like a, it happened like an immediate change, you know, but it's like over time, as I look back on these past couple of years, these past three years since discovering that album, it's been like, there's definitely been a significant change in the way that I view art because of this album. And I art surrounds my life. I've even implemented the ideas and styles styles of the avalanches into my own music. I sample all the time now. I think sampling is so fucking cool. It has been such a interesting way to see how sampling has changed not only my perspective on the way I make music, but also my perspective on the way I view music. I'm listening to music and I'm like, oh, hey, that's a cool sample that I could use. Or if I'm listening to a song that incorporates samples, I am constantly examining the way that they're using the samples. Just the whole idea of like recontextualizing art has been a pretty big factor of my life in the past few years and it would not be the case if it wasn't for the avalanches since I left you. Like I said guys, my life revolves pretty much around music. A lot of these albums have changed my perspective on music, thus changing my life. <laughs> I discovered the avalanches in probably t like late 2020. So now we're gonna go backwards to mid 2020. We're talking June of 2020, okay? This dude named Will Toledo released an album called Making a Door Less Open, and then this dude named Kyle Reed decided to make a video review of that album and post it online and eventually getting addicted to creating content and posting it online. And now I cannot escape this uh, hellish landscape I've made for myself. <laughs> Making a Door Less Open, that, that's the, uh, the final album on this list. I'd go as far as saying that this album has been the biggest change in my life. My whole life revolves around work and YouTube. That's my life. I and mean, also music too, but like that fits in with YouTube. It's gonna sound cringy, but it's given me a purpose. I sit down on camera and I edit these videos and stuff like that. And I, I feel like I belong here. You know, I feel like I, I am 
on this earth to kind of entertain and i've always felt that way and i just didn't really know how to express it in a way that was right for me i don't know there's something about creating content that's like i'm never gonna stop doing this maybe i would have done it in the future had it not been for mad low but i think everything happens for a reason and i think it happened at the right time you know i just graduated high school i was ready to fucking do something i didn't want to go to college but i had to go to college and then i ended up dropping out when i had 900 subscribers not a good idea don't fucking do that i made a decision to drop out of college at 900 subscribers was it the right decision honestly i'd say yes should you do that probably not <laughs> i don't get paid enough from youtube to to do this full-time that's why i work a full-time job my whole life revolves around youtube like content is my life like even at work i do content so content is my life i wouldn't have it any other way honestly like it i mean it sounds hellish maybe to someone who doesn't enjoy it as much as i do but i love it i wake up every single day grateful for the fact that there are people out there who enjoy watching my videos and it, it gives me a lot of security knowing that i can step away for a little bit and come back and release a video and there's still going to be people watching it it's a really cool feeling i've been doing this for the past three and a half years if i did not make that video of me reviewing Mad Low. I don't know where I'd be right now in life, but luckily I don't have to think about that. That's why I say I owe a lot to Will Toledo. <laughs> Damn dude, that kind of got a little deep at the end there. Those are the six albums that I would say have significantly changed my life. Tell me some albums that have had a significant impact on your guys' life. I'm very curious, you know, this is a fun, this was a fun thing to do to kind of look back at all the music I've listened to and think, okay, which ones have actually impacted my life in a way where I would not be the same person had it not been for my experience with that album. So do some soul searching and uh, write out your stuff in the comments, guys. Thank you for watching.